NVIDIA stock, NVDA. Today's a good day. Have a look at this. Up 3.73%, a big uptick. In fact, over the past five days alone, we've had a persistent uptick. Up now, 7.16%. Yes, this doesn't make up for the pain we've been feeling over the past one month, down 21.58%. All the past six months, down 31.6%. Or even year to date, down 32.49%. But it is a start. It is a change in sentiment. And with the market more broadly, with Jerome coming out, Jerome Powell coming out and saying, listen, these rate hikes, these increases in the underlying interest rate posted by the Fed, we're only increasing at half a percentage point. We're not jumping to 0.75%. We're not jumping to that. We're sticking with what we've been saying. There is the potential of a soft, safe landing. This is what Jerome said. So, with that sentiment in the marketplace, with the Fed coming out being very dovish, being very positive about what could happen in the future, who stands to benefit? Who stands to benefit from that? And but more accurate question, what equities stand to benefit? My number one answer. My number one answer to that question I've been asked today a few times is NVIDIA. NVIDIA, a highly growth predicated equity with inflationary hedges and surrounded by secular trends going forward. Who stands to benefit from this? The answer is NVDA. It continues to be the answer. Financial strength is there. Financial strength allows this company to operate efficiently irregardless of the economic environment. A healthy amount of cash on hand. So much cash on hand that they could instantaneously pay off all the debt obligations and still have a large amount of cash on hand to reinvest and make acquisitions. Altman score, very, very high. Altman score of 22.04. The chance of financial default in NVIDIA over the next two, three years, virtually zero. Virtually zero because of the financial stability provided not only by that cash on hand, but also those operational free cash flows. We saw that AMD absolutely smashed earnings. Up in terms of revenue around 71%. Earnings up 117%. Very, very impressive. What does that tell you? That tells me, especially when the highlight of AMD's earnings call was their server-based chips, their data center-based chips. What have I been saying about NVIDIA? That data center business, that transition away from discretionary consumer spending more towards those enterprise clients, that stands to massively benefit the company. Massively benefit not only the earnings, not only the free cash flow, but also the tangible growth and prevalence of their products, the firmly entrenched financial strength of their company going forward. The company stands to not only grow exponentially, moving up from this $592 billion market cap, I believe, to a market cap well in excess of a trillion, but also become a far more firmly entrenched, far more pivotal company in relation to these other tech players, like some Meta, Microsoft, Amazon. NVIDIA is there. NVIDIA is becoming more and more powerful by the day, and yet, the market is yet to reflect that. Yes, up big on the day, up 3.73%, decent uptick, but it's not there yet. There is still more to come. I can say that with full conviction. Net income of 36 Point two, net, sorry, net margins of 36.24%. Absolutely outstanding, especially in an inflationary environment. An inflationary environment where the single most important characteristic to have from a business is pricing power. How can you incrementally raise prices over time? How can you become a more profitable business despite the inflationary pressures on your business? NVIDIA has those characteristics. Extremely high net margins complemented by the underlying nature of their products, not only in that enterprise space where they can raise prices incrementally on those bigger clientele, but also in the discretionary gaming market. You see NVIDIA GPUs at times selling for double on the secondary market. What does that tell you? That tells you that the premium associated with these companies, associated with these products, can be massive. NVIDIA can get away with incremental price increases on their GPUs, on their gaming products, and still succeed over time. Still retain their client interest in consistent sales. Operating margins, gross margins are the same story. At 64% and 37% respectively, historically and on an industry basis. Best we've ever seen from NVIDIA. Now, when a company's growing, when a company's compounding over time, oftentimes we'll think to ourselves, well, you know, it's got too big. It's got too large. No way it'll grow anymore. That's what they were saying about Google for quite a while. 
They're talking about Google. They're saying, well, you know, Google's too big. Can't grow anymore. For the past five years, people have been saying that. Google's too large. Won't grow anymore. Got to stay away from that equity. And yet, what Google's gone out and done is grown at the fastest pace it ever has over the past decade. I think it's the same case with NVIDIA. I think given the secular trends surrounding this business, the potential for growth going forward in data centers and AI and gaming and self-driving technology, potentially even beating Tesla in that self-driving war, this company's just getting started. This company's just beginning to get into that violent, that very aggressive compounding growth phase where they become, I don't want to say the most valuable company in the world, but easily within one of the top three, four most valuable companies in the world within the next several years, I believe. What about the valuation? Yes, it's a high quality business. Yes, it has the potential to achieve all these wonderful things. But at a tangible level right now, how much is the company actually worth? Let me show you. A forward PE ratio of 36.4. A current PE ratio of 52.86. You can see why the market's been punishing this company. You can see why it's been getting bashed down in price because so many investors see this and they think, well, can't be touching that. Got to stay away from those high PE companies, but a PE ratio is not the be all end of investing. A PE ratio is not the only thing to focus on when assessing a company. You need to think about the tangible growth that's perpetuating behind that PE. A high PE is not necessarily bad, and a low PE is not necessarily good. It's all about the growth taking place within the company. So, yes, there is a high current PE a slightly lower forward PE, but how much growth is actually taking place? How is this company actually growing relative to those PE ratios? That is what actually matters. That is what gives you a tangible valuation understanding of what this company actually is on a valuation basis. Now, if we price in, if we price in with a growth rate that many people have been saying, you know, analysts have been pricing it at between 39 and 35% growth going forward. If we price in the low end of that, the low end of those analyst growth assumptions, let me show you what we get. Despite having a high PE ratio, which may stipulate overvaluation, if we price in the low end of analyst estimates, look at that price target. A price target of $404.45. Relative to the current trading price of 203, that's a 49.72% margin of safety. That's pretty good. That's actually very, very good relative what this company is a high a supposedly high priced growth equity normal times oftentimes if you could buy that at fair value one to one like a 10 percent margin of safety that would be great be absolutely fantastic let it compound over time let it build your wealth but what you have here is a chance to buy an extremely high class company well below its intrinsic value and so you not only get that compounded growth over time but also that safety with your purchase, that differential between what the company is already worth and what it's tangibly going to be worth going forward. This, by all accounts, by everything I'm seeing, I've analyzed these growth rates, the underlying financial strength, the changing market sentiment and the dovish nature of the Fed relative to growth equities right now. This, this poses a top class opportunity. You look at the past growth rates, past growth rates of 34.5% over the past decade, 31.8% over the past five years, yes. A slight reduction in growth over the past five years, but a one-year growth rate of 122.5%. As the industries in which NVIDIA is positioned continue to become more and more prevalent within our lives. As self-driving becomes implemented not only in Tesla's vehicles, but also Tesla vehicles more broadly across the world. As gaming continues to grow, as data centers becomes a core piece of their business, and as AI as AI, artificial intelligence, continues to shape our world, influence, change our world in so many different facets, NVIDIA's there. NVIDIA's providing the technology needed for that change. And as long as they're positioned in those industries, as long as they continue to exhibit the extraordinary underlying financial characteristics I've seen within this company, in culmination with that changing sentiment, I can't complain. NVIDIA remains an extremely advantageous buy. NVIDIA remains one of the single companies I am most bullish on in the world right now. Of course, conduct your own research first, look into the business before you make any decisions about investments. But if you enjoyed this video, hope you learned something more about my current thoughts on NVIDIA relative to the rest of the market, then please 
Drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company or a topic you want me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. But until then, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.